The whistling breeze, mute. The pounding surf, frozen. Time itself takes a breath. At light's edge, all is perfectly still. The world captured in a painting, locked in a moment. Music, faint and fleeting, drifts coastward on the lifeless air. And in the distance, beyond the broken earth, a city beckons. And how is business today, Mistress Theva? Oh, frenetic. Look, I have a new customer. Tis good to see you, my friend. barley seeds you wanted. They should produce a better harvest than the last. What, just like that? Oh, well, Fino, you really are a dear. Well, I'd best be tidying up some of those empty shacks before the pests move in. Keep an eye on the place while I'm out, eh? Seems an age since last we spoke. Not since the prisoner exchange in Doma. And Yotsu. It has been even longer for me, of course, if you count the days I've spent here. The time has only added to the relief I feel seeing you safe and well. Alizé said much the same thing. I don't think I've ever had such a scolding. But I believe an exchange of news is in order. Come, tell me of your arrival and all that came before. I see. But the Exarch and Alizé told me what they knew of events. But I had stubbornly clung on to the hope that all-out war might yet be avoidable. And poor Tataru. She must be sick with worry. We must endeavor to return as soon as we may. It would be nice to bring her good tidings for a change. But before we bid this world farewell, we must first ensure that it is not rejoined to the source. We must prevent the Eighth Umbral Calamity. Orianger's vision of the future has, I fear, every chance of coming true. By his description, the catalyst for the Calamity was a formless and deadly weapon employed by the Garlean Empire. Which can only mean one thing. Black Rose. Gaius was telling you the truth. When we were on the trail of the Asians, we saw evidence that the gas was being manufactured once more. Gaius was adamant that the project had been scrapped, but so long as there are wars to be waged, there will always be those determined to win by any means. And thus simply destroying the existing stores of Black Rose would do little to alter fate's course. In that sense, our involuntary journey here to the first was something of a boon. Together with the Exarch, we've developed a theory as to how we believe the rejoining will be set in motion. 
I'm sure Orianger himself will cover the subject in more detail. But I can tell you the process requires that both worlds, the Source and the First, be facing an existential threat. One being Sin Eaters, of course. They are a menace that I would dearly love to remove, and not just to avert a calamity. I may be a stranger to this world, but I will not stand idly by and let innocent people be slaughtered. That is what brought me to the gates of Yulmore. Ignoring its pretensions as a kind of capital city to what remains of the world, it is nonetheless a center of power and authority. If any solutions are to be found, I believe our search should begin there. What say you, old friend? Hungry for another adventure? And so we take to the road once more. That gate up ahead is known as the Open Arms, and Yulmore itself lies beyond. This, meanwhile, is the aptly named Gate Town, the dwelling place of the many desperate souls who hope to be chosen to live in the city proper. Ah, uh, I thought I recognized you. Brought a new friend, eh? <laughs> I'll bet you got a trick or two up your sleeve. Maybe even three. Care to show me? She's not here to compete. Leave her be. What? I was only making conversation. wishes to dine on fish divine. We seek a master culinarian who can guarantee seafood perfection. Dazzle the matron with your delicious dishes and life in the city will be yours to enjoy. Even on days when fish is not on the menu! Who among you will answer the call? Name yourself or another? We may not at all. recall how I said Yulmore was a center of power and authority? Well, that is not the only reason for its fame. It is also known as the City of Final Pleasures. The noble and the wealthy who survived the Flood gathered here to live out the rest of their days in decadent abandon. A poor man could sooner pass through the Ivan Needle than Yulmore's gates. The only way the common folk can enter this perverted paradise is if they fulfill the whim of one of the privileged. And so they are picked over like market produce. Charms, we welcome you with open arms. Come, 
Join us in the city of splendor and live out your life in an ecstasy of endeavor. Just look at those expectant faces. What could you possibly be waiting for? Well, well, what have we here? An extra share of meal to celebrate our newest resident. For you. Oh, Enjoy. Thank goodness. Meal is a foodstuff which Yulmor routinely doles out to the people of Gate Town, and apparently a staple for its citizens as well. Many here rely on it to survive in these times of scarcity, yet the whole arrangement just seems... Well, let's just say it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. There you are. The thief who claims the harvest on my behalf. Hand it over. Well, oh, oh. Forgive me. I just, I have to get into the city. I have no family and all my friends have already been chosen. No one here gives a damn about me. When the meal gets handed out, I'm lucky if I get a smell of it. No matter what I do, they won't call out my name. I'm so tired, I'm so bloody hungry. I thought maybe I could steal your idea. Get in that way. What is your name? Kai Shear. Tell me then, Kai Shear. Must it be your more or nothing? What of the Crystarium? They may not offer charity, but you would be fairly compensated for any work you did. No, no, it has to be your more. That's where all my friends are. We made a promise that we'd live together in paradise. was to make my deal with the Ondo at the Clave. Listen carefully, and I shall tell you my plans for the business, and how best to arouse the Ulmoran's interest. You'll give me your place? Just like that? I'm giving you a chance, nothing more. What comes of it is entirely up to you. I understand. Oh, thank you, thank you! This was but one path. There will be others. But for young Kai Shia, it was the difference between life and death. I do not regret my decision, yet I will admit that a part of me wonders if it was for the best. We strive to bring swift salvation to this world that countless lives might be saved, not least your own. Even if it came at the cost of one man, should I have forged on regardless?
I suppose not. Were Astinian here, he would most likely scoff at my soft-heartedness. Same old Alfino, ever the slave to sentiment. <laughs> but I thank you for your kind words nonetheless. Let us see to it that both these stories have a happy ending. Shall we return to right then? Is that? I can't be sure, but I, I think someone's in trouble. Come on, they may need our help. <laughs> 